Hi everyone. I always try to think of something interesting to demonstrate and I've had a lot of questions about the difference between painting on hot press paper and cold press paper. So I thought I would do a little demonstration. I've got some hot press paper here and some cold press paper and I'm going to do, I've divided it up into four squares. I'm going to do wet in wet on the one side and wet on dry on the other side and then we'll let it dry and we'll see you'll see for yourself how different the results are so I'm going to wet the uh, cold press paper we're starting on first just let that soak in a bit let's wet the hot pressed paper and the hot press paper usually always needs a little bit more water. It seems to dry out quicker. And Okay, now I'm going to take a dark color. I've got French ultramarine. And let's just do a simple impression of a cone flower. So I'm going to start off in the... cold press paper and I guess I should have done it bigger but um, and then sometimes these cone flowers have a little bit of mauve or purple in the center with their stamens and I'm going to just add a little bit of cobalt violet there that's a bit too wet. I need when you when you paint wet in wet, your paint needs to be um, of a drier consistency. Sometimes even just out of the tube. Okay, maybe I'll use a darker color to get my effect here. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing on the hot, hot pressed paper, and you can see already it acts quite differently. It doesn't diffuse as quickly as it did there on the cold pressed paper, wet in wet. Add a little bit of purple in the middle. And now I'm going to do wet on dry. And now we can have the paint a little wetter because we're going on to dry paper. So the nice thing about the cold pressed is you get these broken lines which gives you some nice texture. So it, it doing florals and I guess some landscapes too gives you a more interesting um, texture. But there's different ways of getting texture. Put a little bit of stuff in the middle there. Now let's do the same on hot press paper. And you, well, we don't get the broken lines as much, but um, that's quite different. There we are. Let's go. You see, already I have to go back in here with the wet in wet and add more for the centers because of the way it dries into the paper. So let me just do a few leaves. The leaves of um, cornflowers are sort of boring. They're very thin stems and they have um, not much in the way of leaves really. Maybe I'll do a a little bud here. Let's see. Do well, I think we need one on the other side now to balance it off. So let's do a teeny one. Okay, 
So we'll let that dry. Okay, now that it's dry, let's take a look at it. And you can see on the cold pressed paper, the paint has diffused a whole lot more than it did on the hot pressed paper, even though I put an extra layer of water on the hot pressed paper. The wet on dry, you get similar results from the hot pressed paper, except that on the cold pressed paper, you can get more texture by using a thicker paint and you get broken lines. I don't have too many there because I sort of went over the petals a little more. Had I not done that, the lines would have been a little more broken. But actual fact for a flower, they were too broken. But, but the broken lines can be very useful in some instances. So basically, there's your difference between hot pressed and cold pressed paper. This is the hot pressed, this is the cold pressed. And um, had I used Arches, this is Arches hot pressed paper, which is what I use a lot. I paint about 95% of the time on hot pressed paper. I just love the way the paint sits on top of the paper rather than soaks in and then you have to go and do more layers. When I was uh, still studying watercolor classes, I remember it being drummed into us that the fewer brush strokes, the better in watercolor to keep your freshness. Of course, ex that's, there's an exception to that rule if you're doing glazing where you're building up layer upon layer for a specific effect. And I do that too when I do sunsets. Then I use, um, I'll use either cold pressed or hot pressed paper depending on how I feel on that day. I would suggest that you do this exercise and see the difference for yourself and get, the, and get a feel for the paper and see if um, maybe you'd prefer to paint on hot pressed paper. You can get some really nice effects in landscapes on hot, on hot press paper. And I love painting on it. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little demonstration. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you next time.